I've taken what I've got of the West Rose table down to the basement. I'm going to finish chipping off the edge down there. I figure I can do it in the evening, put in a couple hours here and there. I've done that because I've got to get the video finished for this thing right here. I put it off long enough. It's finished now so that I can do it. But this video is another of my in the shop videos. It's going to cover two topics again. Um, first is the bar clamp that I made around about this time last year. I made it was actually a second video on exactly the same build but this time I added you know narration to it because I had a lot of complaints in the first video that you know nobody knew what was going on well the fact is the people that don't know what's going on are probably not woodworkers in the first place so the second video didn't really do well which I I anticipated because it's long when you when you add narration to a video, it really extends how long it will be, especially if it's detailed narration. What I've discovered since then is that the narration doesn't have to be detailed at all. It can be general. People just like to hear you talk about it. That's all. They're really not interested in the fine details. I didn't get a whole lot of comments on the second video. I got a lot on the first one, but they were mostly complaints about our narration and stuff like that. We're talking about my, you know, uh, complete lack of safety in using all my tools. Okay, the first comment here is about screwing the T-nut in. Guy said that, you know, isn't it enough just to drive it in? As if there's always constant pressure on it, yes, that would be enough. But otherwise, you have to screw it in because it'll pop right out. You know, those little tangs on there, they'll just fix it in place so it doesn't twist. That's what they mostly do. These things are, are made to be compressed into something and then, you know, it's bolted on from the other side. So, the screws hold it in. Absolutely necessary in a project like this. Okay, I just had to run off and get this one. It says, you made another clamp that had all thread rod attached to the bar for strength. Did you decide it wasn't needed? Well, the clamp he's talking about is this one right here. And this is an awesome clamp. but. The problem with this clamp is it's very difficult to build accurately. I shouldn't say it's very difficult, it's more difficult. And I really didn't come up with a better way to do it. So it was one of those things that, you know, I got the idea for it while I was driving to a job in the morning. You know, I, I uh, came home and immediately started working on the clamp and worked out some of the finer details on it. But you know what, this clamp is not the, not the focus of this video, but this one predates the other one anyway. The other one was meant to be easier to build than this one, even though if you can build these ones, these would be the ones to have. The way this works and what makes this so good is that it locks into the thread like that, so you can adjust it really close, you know. The, the, the lead screw part here doesn't even have to be that long. It can be like almost an inch shorter because when you can get this up close, you don't need that much adjustment room. Also, the bar, which I made out of oak for this one, although any hardwood would do, can be thinner because what's happening here is that the rod takes the tension, the pulling forces, while the, the bar carries the compression forces, you know, the pushing forces. So the steel being a lot stronger than the oak they kind of you know balance each other out so it doesn't bend. The next comment had to do with what kind of wood you could use. You can use any hardwood to build one of these clamps. Wrong clamp asshole. We'll get there. You could probably even do it with softwood if it's a harder variety of softwood. You know really soft white pine wouldn't work as well obviously but a good like Douglas fir, well seasoned Douglas fir would work well the main problem is that the bar will flex, will bend, okay? And another problem is that this point right back here can dig into the wood as well. So, it's better to use hardwood. I have a lot of maple on hand because I had access to that for free, so I used that. There were two or three comments on the miter saw because I used it prominently in that video. People say, well, how accurate is it and all that stuff. Uh, like I said before, you get what you pay for where miter saws are concerned. A lot of people think that, you know, especially sliding miter saws are not as accurate. And that can be the case. Uh, 
some people point out how much flex there is when it's fully extended like that. But it's been my experience that that really doesn't come into play. You've got to hold the handle fairly loosely. You know, I don't let go of it or anything, but fairly loosely and guide the sock through the cut. Don't wrench it to one side or the other or you'll throw your cut off. It's as simple as that. Last comment. Some of the comments aren't showing because I could only go back, I think it was three months. What kind of software do I use to draw the plans? That's SketchUp. Everybody uses SketchUp. Well, the next project was my knife made from a coal chisel. And the number one comment on that was on the video itself, how, you know, good it looked. And i got to be honest, I spent like a week <laughs> just editing that video. The opening title itself, just the opening title, took like three hours to do. Because I don't have, you know, big fancy production tools. I've just got a cheap video editor and, you know, my own ingenuity. Another common question was, what was the name of the music I used in the video? There's not really a, a name as such. It's music, it's production music that I got for the video. It's not generally available to the public. Like, you won't hear it on the radio or anything like that. One good question had to do with what I do to the shop after, you know, working on metal. You know, metal shavings and all that get around. I don't do anything special because, you know, I'm not doing fine furniture in here for the most part. And even if I was, I don't think I'd do a whole lot because the metal shavings are generally confined to a very small area and then it's just to sweep that up and move on. I had nearly 700 comments on the video but once again I could only go back three months but I gotta tell you that a lot of the more interesting ones I had to delete because they're really foul. I don't know I don't understand what motivates people to make comments that are you know so rude but I guess that's just the way it is. Being an anonymous on YouTube you can say whatever the heck you want and there won't be any repercussions. Another really common comment was, I would rather buy a knife than make one. Well, I tell you that buying a knife is not an accomplishment. Making one is. I had a lot of wannabe knife makers pointing out all the mistakes I made. <laughs> and saying, well, why didn't you use better steel? You know, why bother making something out of that cheap junk steel that you did? You know, the point, you know, here's their head, and the point is somewhere up in the stratosphere. I think it's actually in orbit. They've missed it by that much. I have one comment about cutting with a jigsaw rather than a grinder. Like, maybe the jigsaw would be more accessible or safer. Uh, the jigsaw, there's no blade that you can put in the jigsaw, as far as I know, unless you get a carbide grip one that will cut that steel. It's just too hard. Which brings me into another point. The steel was already hardened. It's cold chisel. You can cut steel with a cold chisel. You can cut stone with a cold chisel. It's already hardened and tempered. I didn't do anything to ruin the temper in the steel itself. I was very careful grinding it. It never got too hot. The sound effect that I added, the hissing when I put it in the snow, was that it was a sound effect. It wasn't, wasn't real. It wasn't making that sound. I just put it in the video for effect. A lot of people give me tips on drilling hardened steel. Finally, one more common question was, can I buy it? Uh, once again, I don't make anything to sell, so no. So here's the knife after a year. I don't use it a whole lot, but occasionally I do. I dropped it a couple times on the floor. I haven't sharpened it since the, the first sharpening. And I've got my list here, and we'll see if it can cut paper still. And the can holds an edge really well for what it is. This was a, a $7 chisel that I used for like three years chipping mortar out of door frames on jobs. I must have chipped out, I don't know, a couple thousand hinge pockets in door for steel door frames with the chisel. Cursed me one day, well, you know, it's the perfect shape and size for a good knife like this. So... Why not? You, know, you got the elite knife makers that would frown upon stuff like this. But you know what? It cuts. It works. It looks great. So what more could you ask for?